Okay, now we think spatial audio is so cool. Released in 2019, I only got to spend a short time playing with the Odyssey Mobius while I was producing some content down at Newegg. And I really didn't get them at the time. I was way less familiar with planar magnetic drivers. I've always been a little wary of 3D or surround sound manipulation, especially when listening to music mixed for a mostly stereo environment. Overall, the build quality and feature set were impressive, but the price kind of made me inhale through my teeth a little bit back then. Now, roughly two years later, as we're watching Apple, figure out that consumers do appreciate higher quality audio and the tech around spatial manipulation is becoming more accessible, I thought this would be the right time to take a look back at the Odyssey Mobius. First, the audio quality conversation is just different for using different drivers. I'm gonna be grossly oversimplifying here, so uh, bear with me. Audio reproduction on planar magnetics this is a larger, flatter driver, driven a little more evenly over that surface area. So I find the lows tend to be fuller, but less punchy than other types of dynamic drivers. And planers can produce some incredible articulation. Details in audio are more accessible and individual instruments are more clearly defined in that soundscape. Like I said, oversimplifying, there are some planers that can punch way harder and there are some dynamics that can achieve a more spacious or articulate sound. And that all comes down to a ton of tiny nuances in construction and tuning. But we're also talking about a gaming headset here, and the most popular options for planers are usually open back cans. Open cans are airier, they're more spacious, and that complements the articulation and instrument separation. Now we're closing the backs on the Mobius. There's still excellent articulation, but the general tone gets a little darker. We lose some of the feel of space a recording can achieve because they're built first for gaming and there's a bunch of tech on tap to manipulate the space around your head and we'll get to that in just a bit. Planers have become my favorite style of headphones for my personal content consumption. That full rich bass which does not roll over the mids and the crisp aggressive attacks are absolutely my jam. The cool techie bit here on the Mobius, Odyssey partnered with Waves to create a 3D audio platform. Not just for a wider stereo or surround sound emulation, but they also include head tracking for a more immersive experience. And it kinda rocks. A brief history? You bet. There are several flavors of this spatial manipulation idea. Apple is making a lot of noise about spatial audio because they have the biggest marketing budget, but their implementation is built on Dolby Atmos. These days, if you're into cinematic audio, I think you care more about that Dolby label, but they're not the only ones. We've also seen DTS 3D, LG 3D Sound Engine, Sennheiser and Epo Surround, Immerse Embody, which is used on my Audio Technicas, Creative Super XFi, and of course, Waves NX on the Mobius. Most of these technologies open up the soundstage of traditionally stereo output. They all have different methods, different algorithms, different ways of calculating the reverb and tuning to make it feel like you're listening in a room or that you're surrounded by the audio you're consuming. None of these consumer headsets have eight actual drivers to properly reproduce 7.1 surround sound, so it's a lot of crazy software to simulate that effect. When it comes to Apple lossless and spatial audio, it's kind of funny because Apple has worked so hard to courageously remove the hardware from their phones and tablets that would more easily allow you to consume lossless audio. There's a collection of songs Apple is using to highlight spatial audio in Apple Music, and some sound really good, and some sound kind of garbage. At its best, you get an airier and wider representation of the song. And to create the sense of space and distance, you're likely going to hear low mids and bass drop out a little because echo and reverberation need to go somewhere to simulate an area to simulate space around you. At its worst, you're going to hear a dull recreation of that song, which is muddled and flat and with 
something that sounds like an artificially jacked stereo widening effect. At once, I really liked hearing Alicia Keys with this effect on, and immediately after, I had this look on my face listening to Fall Out Boy. And I'm not trying to pick failure songs for this effect. Fall Out Boy is on the spatial audio playlist as an example of how this works. I didn't think it sounded very good. In time, I believe, or at least I hope, that more artists will take 3D audio seriously while mixing and mastering. You know, have an option for a stereo flavor of that track and then a, a, a special version for our services that support some kind of spatial or 3D audio. Those newer tracks will sound excellent with this effect being mixed specifically for that effect. Right now, it's kind of a coin flip if spatial audio is going to sound better or if it'll just be the musical equivalent of colorizing black and white movies. Vomit. But back to the Odyssey. I have similar overall concerns listening to the same tracks on Apple Music as I had in my personal Flack collection. Alicia Keys, Fall Out Boy, in this comparison, both sounded pretty good over the Mobius using the Waves 3D audio. It's similar in terms of compromises. This effect really plays with EQ and tuning. It can feel like the bass cuts, and everything gets wider. And both of these effects, Apple and Odyssey, seem to be more about surrounding your head in audio. By contrast, compared against Creative's Super XFi, which is trying to simulate speakers in space at a farther distance from you. Alicia Keys sounded great on both, but Fallout Boy sounded way better in my old school CD rip flack with the Waves 3D audio than it did in Apple's special spatial audio playlist. It was brighter, more vibrant, a clearer separation of instruments on a broader soundstage. And that's what's kind of fun comparing these directly. I had my Mobius plugged into my Fio Q3, moving the USB cable back and forth between my PC and my iPhone. I was turning on Waves 3D audio on the headset for the PC, then I was turning off that effect when listening on the iPhone, Otherwise, same hardware, same amp, same drivers. It really was. It was a fun way to compare different processing technologies. But here's the real trick. One of the dead giveaways of 3D audio is the cloud of audio that follows your head. When you sit in surround sound speaker setups, audio is coming from all around you, but that audio is anchored. You have a specific perception of that surround effect because the source does not move your ears move within the field of audio around you. I think one of the reasons surround plugins might feel so artificial is because they're always perfectly fixed to your head's perspective, but not on the Mobius. Again, this is a gaming headset. So the idea would be you're sitting in front of a monitor or TV to play a game or watch a movie and your focus is, is specific. You know, you've got a direction for where that content lives. So as your head makes small movements, the audio shifts the perspective of that audio to anchor where your audio should be coming from. Getting back to music, where some tracks might not sound as great with some spatial effect just slapped on there, pinning the effect to a specific direction makes the effect seem more realistic. The degrees of movement here are super fine. I think some of the older Mobius reviews are really funny, where folks were acting like, why would you use this if you need to look away from your monitor to follow the direction of your game audio? <laughs> like, like we'd all be gaming and hear a noise behind us and be like, ah! Oh no! My game! I can't see my game! I mean, who's looking away from their monitor just because they heard a sound effect over their shoulder? The reality of using this is way more nuanced. Little movements of your skull are accounted for. And this all contributes to a sense of audio reproduction that feels more realistic. And that, in turn, ends up being more immersive. And this is where I get all Twitter-pated about the Mobius now that I grok what this headset is trying to do. $400 is pricey. There's, there's no way around that. This is not an impulse buy. But moving from analog cables to USB cables or to Bluetooth over LDAC, 
we're doing a really good job of powering these drivers. And this might be one of the easier ways to get into planar magnetics as the Mobius has its own built-in amp to properly drive this hardware. Plus, if you're hooking this up to an Android phone, LDAC is feeding a higher quality data signal if your music collection is high res or lossless. LDAC is actually pretty good at latency too. I was dying a lot less in Thumper than I thought I would be playing over Bluetooth on a phone. This isn't an oranges to oranges comparison against nicer consumer Bluetooth headphones or the AirPods Max. The Mobius is way better at its intended design of complementing movies and gameplay. And it's pretty good when out and about if your surrounding area isn't too noisy. There's no active noise cancellation here, just passive closed back noise reduction. With a little adjustment to the fit, it's pretty good seal. It's gonna block some noise. I don't know that you'd want to wear them on an airplane. Now that Apple has branded spatial audio, it's like a whole crew of techies forgot that we've had quite a few versions of this in play before Apple showed up to this party kind of late. So along the way, we don't want to lose sight of the greater audio tech landscape where some truly innovative and premium experiences can be found. I'll of course leave some links down below this video where you can find more info on the Odyssey Mobius. Maybe shop some of these bad boys online. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, sharing is caring, and subscribing to the channel. Supporting your favorite content creators has never been more critical than it is today, so I greatly appreciate those of you who are checking out the links down below. Maybe you're shopping a little merch. That kind of stuff really does help keep production rolling on this channel. You can catch a full list of all my affiliates and partnerships on somegadgetguy.com, or you might consider, just maybe, Checking out the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically a collection of the coolest tech pals on the web today, so I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at somegadgetguy on the Twitters and the Twitch, and the Facebooks and the Instagrams, and I will catch you all on the next review.